Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I am from group 1. Today, uh, our group will talk about liquid-liquid extraction. In general, liquid-liquid extraction uh, is a process to separate organic compound uh, from from an aqueous solution. Uh, in in uh, in this experiment, we did we did extraction uh, of acid, base, and neutral. Uh, the process involves uh, a shaking, shaking and a, uh, an aqueous solution with uh, water immiscible organic solvents, then allowing the uh, then allowing it to be layers. As for the problem statement, uh, the source of the error is uh, the measurement of substances. Uh, this is because it will it will. It will affect the overall quality of the of the extraction. Next, the, the separation process also is one of the source of error, as uh, it hard to differentiate between between uh, between the two layers because uh, the colors are quite similar. The organic solvent that we use for this experiment is dichloromethane. Uh, dichloromethane is uh, it have low boiling point and inflammable. Uh, the, the, the solution also have different density from water that it will dense, that it have more density than water that it will dense uh, to the lower constituent to the lower constituent of the water of the water. So uh, I will pass to the next presenter to talk about methodology okay uh, thank you Dania uh, for the next part we will look at the methodology which is consists of acid extraction base extraction and neutral extraction so for the first part to extract the acid we need to add 10 ml of 5% NaOH into the separatory funnel this one uh, and then we need to shake the funnel vigorously for the several times and open the stop cord uh, to release the pressure. Make sure when you shake the funnel, you need to uh, make sure the face of the tip away from the others. And then put it back at the retort stand. As you, as you can see here, there is two layers that occur. The top layer is the acid layer and the bottom layer is the DCM layer. After that, we need to run off the bottom layer, which is the DCM layer, into the mixture plus, and run off the uh, acid layer, which is acid layer, into the acid plus. Okay, for the next part is base extraction. Uh, basically, this procedure have the same step like the acid extraction, but this time we add 10 ml of 5% HCl into the uh, into the uh, mixture plus and add 15 ml of 10% NaOH into the uh, base plus. And then uh, we need to wait, uh, let it cool at the room temperature before adding it into the funnel. Then reach the base funnel with the 10 ml of DCM, then put it into the funnel. After that, we can see the top layer that occur which is will be the base extraction. That's all from me. I will pass to the next presenter. Okay, for the neutral extraction, we will take the solution from uh, base extraction, the bottom layer, and we will add 10 milliliters of water and transfer it to the separation funnel. And then uh, we will shake the sep uh, separation funnel vigorously uh, for multiple time and make sure that it is away from us. And then we'll put it back to the uh, retort stand and uh, release the pressure. For And we will wait it for a while until uh, we see the two layers 
inside the separation funnel. And then uh, we will uh, separate the solution. The top solution will be the neutral will be the neutral solution and the bottom one will be the water. Lastly, we will transfer the neutral solution uh, into the neutral flask and uh, we will let it slightly open to, re uh, to let DCM to vaporize. Finally, this is the result that we got. We have acid, base and neutral. That's all for me. I'll pass to the last presenter. Next is the health, safety and precaution. Uh, first, we need to wear a closed shoes, wear glove and leg coat. Make sure to button up your leg coat um, to avoid chemical substance, splash or spills, and um, label the equipment that we use to avoid confusion and also mixing of chemicals. Last is the liquid liquid extraction uh, that apply in industry. First is chemical industry. Uh, liquid liquid extraction um, is used to extract and purify the to extract and purify the organic compound, um, acid and base. Uh, next is food and beverage industry, where um, the extraction for the extraction of uh, fragrance. Essential oils, essential oils, and also flavors from natural sources like fruits. And last is the mining industry, where the extraction and purification uh, of metals from ores and recovery of valuable minerals. That's all from our group. Thank you. Assalamualaikum, and we are from group two. So, today we are going to present about the separation, purification and identification of organic compounds. So, our group consists from three members, which is me, Haris, Farisa and Aina. So, without any delay, we are going to proceed with the problem statement, which is from Farisa. Okay, firstly, we need to know what is liquid-liquid extraction. It is a process, it is a separation technique that we use to separate compounds or elements from the mixture by transferring them between two immiscible liquid phases. And um, this process typically involves the mixing of the mixture with the solvent and allowing them to separate. And then the two phases will separate and the desired compounds will recover from the solvent-rich phase and liquid-liquid extraction is a process that relies on the principle of differential solubility where the different compounds and elements will dissolve themselves preferentially into one of the immiscible liquid phases. And by adjusting the conditions such as pH and temperature and using the appropriate solvent, uh, specific components can be extracted selectively. And then, um, in practice, liquid-liquid extraction is a process that we use to separate organic compounds from an aqueous solution or suspension. And this process consists of shaking the aqueous solution with the water immiscible organic solvent and allowing the layers to separate. And then, uh, the various solutes that pre present in the mixture will then distribute themselves between the aqueous solution and the organic layers um, according to their relative solubility. I'll pass to the next presenter. All right, next I'm going to present about the method that we did from the last lab session. First, we have to prepare the mixture by labeling acid, mixture and base into three different flasks. And then we weigh the compounds, approximately 0.2 grams of acid, base and neutral compounds using different spatula and different weighing board to prevent contamination. And then we have to put the compounds into the mixture flask and dissolve it in uh, with 10 ml of DCM solution and stir it gently until no undissolved sample is visible. But due to some error because of the expired DCM solution, we have to redo it again by weighing the compounds again and put it in the mixture flask. 
and dissolve it with the latest DCM solution, also 10 mil. And then for the acid extraction, first, uh, we have to support the separatory final using the retort stand and close the stock cook and pour the mixture inside the final. And then to extract the acid, we have to add five, uh, 10 mil of 5% sodium hydroxide inside the final and close the stock cook and then shake vigorously for several times uh, while cautiously releasing the pressure while opening the stock cook. And then allow the layers to separate and run off the bottom layer which is the DCM solution inside the mixture flask and pour the other layers which is the aqueous sodium hydroxide solution inside the acid flask. Next, for the base extraction, um, we have to extract the DCM solution inside the mixture flask with 10 ml of 5% hydrochloric acid and pour it into the final. Allow the layers to separate and run off the bottom layer which is the extracted hydrochloric acid inside the base flask. And then we have to basify the solution using 15 ml of 10% sodium hydroxide solution and rinse it with is it two times with DCM solution with five mil addition at each addition, and then put it into the final, close the stock coat and shake it vigorously for several times, and pour the bottom layer, which is the extracted hydrochloric acid, inside the empty base flask. And uh, next, I'm going to pass to the next presenter. For the result, we will have three flasks over here, which is acid base and mixture flask. For the acid flask, uh, it will contain the sodium salt. Uh, for the base flask, it will contain the hydrochloric salt. And for the mixture flask, it depends on the process, which is if you use the sodium hydroxide, it will contain DCM, base salt, and how is that? And uh, for the if you use the hydrochloric it will contain DCM and acid salt. So the next one is safety and precaution. Okay, for safety and precautions of the experiment, the first one is we need to wear PPE, personal protective equipment, including our lab coats and gloves to protect our hands against uh, chemical splashes and spills. And then the next one, we need to use clean glassware and also separate spatula for different compounds to avoid any contamination during experiment. The next one is proper labeling. We need to label the flask properly to avoid any confusion and unwanted exposure. And the last one is we need to use only unexpired chemicals because um, uh, if we use unexpired chemicals, it, it will disturb the accuracy of our results and the compositions of the sample will also be changed. So we need to use only unexpired chemicals to ensure the reliability and the safety of our experiment. So the next one is the application industry. We have two examples over here, which is oil and gas industry and food beverages industry. So for the oil and gas industry, we the oil and gas industry we use liquid liquid extraction for the impurification, uh, such as Information for the sulfur compounds. So basically, they use the same thing just like the experiments, which they put two, two, what we call that, two unmix, two mixture that can, two mixture that can mix together, two solvent that can mix, two mix, two solvent that can mix together in a mixture, and then they put a solvent in it, and then the solvent will absorb the oil. From the from the mixture, and you can proceed to the extraction. For the food and beverage industry, the liquid liquid extraction used to extract the essential oils from the spice fruit and spice fruit and something something natural. And they use also they also use the same procedure just like oil and gas and the things we, the procedure we do in the experiment. Which is we use the salt, we put the solvent into the mixture, and then the solvent do the job like fully extract out the uh, the, essence, the essential oils and the things, and 
and you can separate it. You can separate it. So, so I think that's it. So this for the oil and gas industry, okay. <laughs> and this for, for the food and beverages industry, and that's all from us. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, and good evening to everyone. I'm Carmarina, and we are group, from Group 3. We'll present about distillation. Distillation is a physical separation technique to obtain pure component of the mixture based on their boiling point. Uh, from our last experiment, uh, the goal of this process is to uh, collect the vaporous DCM from the mixture. Uh, so I will brief uh, shortly about the distillation setup uh, that we used from the past experiment. Uh, firstly is the retort which is uh, liquid is heated and then condenser to cool the vapor. A receiver to collect the distillate. We use beaker to collect the vaporized DCM, and a thermometer to ensure our sample is not overheated. Uh, observe the ter the temperature is always below than 40 degrees Celsius. Uh, in heating a mixture of substances, the most volatile or lowest boiling will distill first, and the other will follow subsequently to distill or not distill at all. Next, we move to the problem statement, which is uh, how to separate and purify uh, DCM from the mixture. We use distillation method because distillation process is to utilize the difference uh, in boiling of the component in liquid mixture by forcing one of the component into gaseous steam. Next, I will pass to the next presenter. Okay, assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Shaki Azfa, and now uh, I will present about the procedures and the results. Okay, uh, the first things that we need to do uh, during this experiment is we need to prepare the the mixture, which is the mixture contains the two things, which is uh, the 10, 10 ml of 10 percent 25 20.5 ml of sodium hydroxide and the uh, uh, has it hydrochloric uh, extracts? Uh, then uh, we put them together into the into the empty flask, and also put the 10 ml of the dichlor dichloromethane, which is DCM, into the flask. So the total of the solution, we, we will get the 30 ml of the solution. Uh, so then, um, uh, we take uh, an empty uh, separate separatory funnel and put the mixture from the flask into the into it uh, then uh, make sure before we, we pour the mixture into the separatory funnel uh, make sure we um, to close the, the stopper so then uh, it will not drop off when uh, when we mix when we shake the mixture and after that uh, uh, we we might we need to mix the mixture uh, vigorously uh, to make uh, to make them uh, become a two, two layers, which is the upper layer, it will be the AC, the AC layer, and the bottom will be the mixture of the DCM and base. So then, um, after we drop all of the DCM solution into the empty flask, we put the we put them into the round bottom flask. In the round bottom flask, we need to prepare. Uh, about the two things important, uh, two, two important things, which is uh, the the boring stone, which is anti anti bumping granule, and the uh, and hydrous sodium sulfate. Uh, the function of the bump the boring stone, which is to uh, to make sure that our solution will not become superheated during the dur during the heat, and the function of the uh, and hydrous sodium sulfate to attract the water from our DCM solution. So we will get the results, which is the pure DCM solution. So then uh, if you can see uh, in the figures too, uh, we put the round bottom flask into the heat, to the steam bath, which is uh, contain the two things, of the, the two things, which is the, uh, the stones and the anhydrous sodium sulfate. Uh, but to make sure, uh, we need to, but to make sure in the during in the 
heat in the heating we need to make sure the heat the temperature of the of the flask uh, will i uh, maintain in 40 degrees celsius how to main, how to we observe that we need to use a temperature the thermometer but do not uh, use the thermometer the bottom of the thermometer contact to the uh, to the flask so then uh, we use the like the figure one we use the apparatus of distillation to to have the to get the uh, dcm solution so then uh, in this figure three we get the the pure dcm solution because of the vaporization of the uh, mixture so there that's from me i will pass to the next presenter so i want to talk about the precaution during the experiment so the first one is about the handling the thermometer. So we use thermometer in distillation as an experiment. So as we know, the thermometer have mercury. So when the thermometer break, it can cause the mercury and separate uh, during the experiment. So the next one is using glove during before doing the experiment uh, because we we will. We will use the chemical to use it, do, to make the experiment. So the next one is using dropper while take the solution. So this solution is the acid uh, in high concentration. So using you should you should we should use glove lah to using the dropper. So the last one is we need to to make sure the pipe is installed neatly. Uh, to prevent the leaking during the experiment and then uh, make sure no error during the experiment. Okay, next I will present about the in this, uh, in, apa? application of in, application in industry. First of all, we have the petroleum refinement where we use where the process of distillation takes place of the dis of the crude oil where we distill the crude oil into separate uh, into a separate component such as biocell this uh, such as diesel gasoline and kerosene uh, this process is called as fractional distillation where it takes advantage of the difference in boiling points of the hydrocarbon next we have the chemical manufacturing where in chemical manufacturing, we use many distillation process. Uh, for example, we use it in the extraction of solvent, where we distill, the sol we, we distill a mixture of different chemicals to extract the desired uh, solvent. Next is in the food and beverage industry. In food, in food and beverage industry, we mainly use in the production of alcohol. In the production of alcohol, we distill the we will distill the fermented mixture to extract the alcohol, such as rum and whiskey. We also use it in the to produce essential oil in food. Next is in the renewable uh, energy resources, where we use distillation in the process of. Um, in the process of gaining, uh, producing ethanol, biofuel such as ethanol, and lastly we have the uh, in the environmental industry where in the water waste treatment we use distillation to distill the the contaminated water into a distilled water where we recycle the water resources for daily use, and that's all from us. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Rahman Kazi Tanvir from Group 4. We're going to present distillation process. And I first want to introduce our member, uh, our leader Abdullah Faz, Amirul Hafiz, and Wan Ilham, and me myself, Rahman Kazi Tanvir. So I'll be first uh, discussing about the introduction of the distillation. So, first, our uh, topic distillation here, we have to hit the process and we have to put the solution here and then we have a condenser and 
we have a, a technique here, all the shown here, and we, are, we have an outlet here. And from the outlet, we are going to uh, get something pure product here, uh, like we have shown here, the water. Uh, but our goal is to get the DCM, uh, dichloromethane. And this is just a technique that we have uh, highlighted here. And we are going to use thermometer and also uh, we're going to cac use CAC clip to attach all the process because uh, uh, just uh, ignore the, uh, any leakage from the process. So next, uh, we have shown here the CAC clip and three-way adapter and also the condenser and the heating mantle. So what is distillation here? Distillation is a process where we can get uh, uh, some solution or the liquid we differentiate by using the boiling point. Here, the boiling point, uh, we're going to use a DCM, so we're, uh, we wanna get DCM, so we know the DCM's uh, boiling point is 40 degrees centigrade. And so we must uh, you know, uh, ensure that here, uh, the temperature do not get uh, rise up to 40, so that we can ignore the faults in the process. Here, distillating outlet, uh, we'll get from here the, uh, distillation outlet, we will get here the DCM, and we have the heating mantle will heat here, and also the condenser. Uh, next, uh, here we have shown the thermometer. In that process, distillation, uh, distillation process uh, into the condenser, uh, we'll get the vapor, and in that vapor, uh, we are, uh, in that vapor, we are going to show that uh, uh, we ha will also pass through the cold water so that uh, the vapor gets, uh, the temperature of the vapor gets decreased and it will condense. Uh, and after that, uh, we'll get the raw DCM in that process. So it is the whole distillation process. And after that, what is the problem statement? So our uh, problem is how to get uh, the DCM after that whole process. And first, we are gonna use that the basic, and into that basic, we will show that uh, we'll just hit the basic first, and then we'll get all the uh, you know the vapor, and after that cold water, then after uh, they will get the uh, DCM as a result. So I will pass the floor to the next presenter so that he can present. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Wan Ilham. Uh, so I will talk about uh, the procedure of distillation. So basically the main concept of the distillation is uh, the more volatile the liquid, the it will uh, it will vaporize first. Uh, uh, like in, in the CM, uh, it will vaporize at 40 degrees Celsius. Uh, like in this uh, picture, uh, we will uh, put the flask in the heat bath with the water in here, and uh, we will put the anti granule, anti bumpy granule, uh, to make it uh, boil gently, and we also add the MgSO4 uh, to uh, separate the DCM from the water, uh, uh, the water from the DCM. Um, after that, we put the thermometer in, into the solution, and but uh, don't touch the uh, the bottom of the flask, and we start to, to heat the solution. And uh, after that, uh, we will wait, we will wait until forty degrees Celsius, and after it reaches the forty degrees Celsius, uh, stop the uh, off, turn off the heat bath. So uh, it actually uh, the DCM will uh, vaporize first, and it will uh, go through to the condenser, and go through the outlet uh, which have the uh, round button flask. And uh, in the round button flask, we will get the D uh, pure DCM, and uh, in the uh, previous flask, it will have the base. So is the result. So I pass to the next presenter. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Abdullah Fawaz, metric number 221537. Okay, I will talk about precaution, health and safety. 
Uh, first, we need to wear the proper leg attire, which is uh, gloves and also leg coat. Uh, these two, we wear the leg coat because we want to prevent from the chemical reagent, chemical reagent, uh, splashes or spill, or maybe uh, exposure to our skin. Uh, and then we wear the gloves because we want to prevent uh, any uh, hazard reagent uh, exposure to our skin. For example, in this experiment, we use we use um, hydrochloric acid and also DCM. So it it is very dangerous for our skin and maybe might be peel off our skin. Next, uh, we need to hand. And we need to wash our hand after finish experiment, and maybe after finish our experiment, and also before leaving the lab. And next, um, we need to keep our personal item away from our experiment space. Uh, in this in this picture, we can see there's a mobile phone, mobile phone uh, near the distillation apparatus. So it is very dangerous because it might. Uh, be in any explosive uh, event in our laboratory. And next, we need to label our clonical flask or maybe our test tube uh, properly. For example, uh, last, for example, in this our experiment, we use acid base and also neutral. So we need to label them correctly so that our experiment going well. Okay, next, I will pass to the next presenter, Hafiz. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, I'm Amirul Hafiz and I will talk about industrial application of this distillation process. Okay, when we in the lab, we will uh, do the distillation uh, lab. Okay, in, in the lab. So this is uh, the apparatus. And then when we scale up, into the industrial application, we got this. Okay, we got uh, the refinery uh, application, refinery, ap ap refinery, industrial application. Okay, the concept is uh, same. Okay, same as the distillation in the lab. Uh, we we put the crude oil. Okay, we extract first, extract first, and then we put in the boiler, and then we boil. Okay, we boil until uh, it it reach some some temperature and then uh, because the crude oil it, in itself it contains uh, uh, many mixture of substance okay and then different mixture of substance different boiling point and then we will uh, vaporize differently okay and uh, little uh, little because little boiling point okay we will uh, vaporize first and then it will be the lightest uh, substance and then it will go up and then we call cool down to liquid like like in the lab then we get this uh, 20 we get gas 40 we get naphtha uh, gasoline and so on okay and then uh, what is the main difference between the lab and the uh, you know refinery is the scale up okay we scale up everything uh, we scale up everything uh, because of the industrial application, okay, we scale up the temperature to break down the many different variety of uh, mixture. Uh, because in the lab we have one or two, just just one or two mixture, right? Uh, so we need to scale up to uh, distillate everything, okay? And then the pressure, okay, we will need to scale up the pressure too. Because what? Because we need to control the boiling point. Uh, we need to control the boiling point for uh, for optimize okay optimize the process because in this lab we have one atm atmosphere we doesn't cater the pressure right uh, okay and then we have the products the products uh, have uh, much much uh, products than the lab the lab we have only two the pure dcm and the pure base uh, like we do before but the products in the refinery we have many uh, like this okay gas naphtha gas line kerosene uh, heavy gas oil and much more okay so the keyword is we scale up everything ah uh, everything okay 
Uh, surely it's not just these three because we have many many factors such as money, okay, workers, uh, what the material. We need to scale up everything, uh, okay. Okay, this is the you know the example of the plant in Malaysia. Uh, I have picked two uh, in the Negeri Sembilan, uh, Petro Malaysia Refinery and Marketing uh, Sendam Rahat at Port Dickson, and in my hometown, uh, Malaysian Refinery. Company Sendamra MRCSB at Sungai Udang Melaka. So you can do internship at these two if you want. Okay. And that's it. Thank you for us. Yeah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum. Today we group five uh, want to present thin layer chromatography. And I will introduce the thin layer chromatography. What is a thin layer chromatography? Thin layer chromatography is a separation technique and the analysis of the unknown compound. Uh, for your information, scientists use thin layer chromatography to identify the unknown compound and determine the activity of the unknown compound. Uh, then I will explain about the chromatography. Chromatography is basically is the separation technique and in this thin layer chromatography we we use uh, we use we use a solvent and a mixture to separate the thin layer chromatography and then a thin layer chromatography is the separation within two between two phase uh, the first phase is mobile phase and the second and the secondary phase is the stationary phase stationary phase uh, the mobile phase is a fluid that carries the components uh, to the at the varying rates and then the stationary the secondary phase is the liquid or fluid in the in the thin layer chromatography remains immobile on the on the component, and then I will explain about the chromatography too. Uh, thin layer chromatography, as we know, we have two two methods. Uh, the first is if the mobile phase is liquid and the secondary phase is liquid, is it is uh, the liquid liquid chromatography. But we use in the experiment is thin layer chromatography, which is the mobile phase is liquid phase, and the secondary phase is solid phase. It's solid, uh, it's solid. And then uh, I will explain about the the foundation of the thin layer chromatography. We need to use uh, two solvent, which is first first solvent is hexane and ethanol, and then the second solvent is DCM and hexane. And then uh, we use a thin layer chromatography. We dip onto we dip in the chamber. We in the chamber that have a solvent to to make uh, the exhaustion exhaustion. Thin layer chromatography is basically a exhaustion of the components and a non-polar components carries the I just carry the vendor was vendor was vendor was bind bind vendor was binding and then the uh, polar components carries the dipole dipole interaction and between the in the thin layer chromatography uh, and then i will explain about the problem statement the problem statement uh, in this experiment we need to identification and polarity of unknown compound by using the thin layer chromatography and we can see we can solve the problem statement by this experiment uh, as we as the result shown. Next, I will pass to the next presenter. Thank you. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay. 
Now I will explain to you about procedure, which is the scientific term, which is methodology. Okay, firstly, there are three compounds. First is acid. We use benzoic acid. And second, uh, natural compound. We, go, we use couple compound. And the third, we use uh, base compound, which is p chrono -anadic. Okay, then uh, we need to collect DCM2 uh, solvent, which is DCM hexane and ethanol hexane, 20 milliliter in the flask. Okay, then we prepare the silica gel, which is have been shown here. Then at the silica gel, we need to use a pencil to mark the solvent front and the baseline, which is one centimeter from below and one centimeter from the top. Okay, from the top, we can label this two silica gel, which is the two solvent, DCM hexane and ethanol hexane. And the baseline, we can mark three compounds, which is what we use, acid, base, and natural. Okay, next, from the flask, 20 milliliter uh, DCM hexane and uh, other solvent, which is ethanol hexane. We can use 1,000 microlit pipette to suck up the uh, from the flask, the two solvent, and then we put into the chamber. Okay. The chamber we use five milliliter each from the solvent. So that means we need to suck up the solvent five times using 1,000 microlit. Okay, and then we put the uh, we use capillary capillary tube to dip into the compound first acid and then we put into the baseline where we mark at the silica gel and then base and then natural. Okay, after we dip the capillary tube and then put into the silica gel. The silica gel we put into the chamber. Okay, make sure that if we put the silica gel into the chamber, make sure that the solvent doesn't, doesn't reach the baseline. So it doesn't interrupt the pencil line. And then after that, we close the lid. Okay, after a few moments, about three minutes to five minutes, then we can take out the silica gel and make sure that the silica gel absorb until the solvent front. Okay, next. Then the result. We get to we get the result after we put the silica gel into the dark room where we uh, puncha. We we touch the silica gel with UV light. And then we can get the color of the, not the color, it's just the mark of the acid, base, and natural. So as we can see, there are two silica gel, which is first from the solvent DCM hexane, and second is ethanol hexane. Okay, then after we mark the each, each compound, where we can see it's move, some of it is move and some of it is not. Then we can calculate the R, which is retardation factor. Okay, then now I want to show you how we can calculate the retardation factor. So from here, we have a, we have a silica gel. Then I said that earlier that we're supposed to mark 1 cm from above and 1 cm from below. So this is solvent front and this is baseline. So we mark 3, which is acid, base and natural. Okay, then given that retardation factor equal to B over A. Okay, then we can see, first I want to highlight the DCM, it's saying. 
then mark here, here, and here. Okay. We assume that we put the ruler, then we calculate this from the baseline until the solar fund. Then we assume that this have five units. E Okay, then we can see that we have marked the acid base and natural. Then from the formula given, R, so we first calculate the acid. RF A equal to, okay, first B, which is from the baseline. So uh, we take this. It should be uh, yes. So we can see that the mark here is uh, two. No, it should be one. One, two, three, and four. Okay then. Okay, first the baseline, which is we can take from the baseline until the solvent fund at the below, so which is five. Then first we calculate the acid. Acid is one centimeter, so one. So it means that this is zero point two five. So next is base. Base is two centimeter from the baseline. So from the baseline is two, then until the solvent fund is five. Then we get zero point four. Then natural four over five, which is zero point eight. So we can see here that each retardation factor is different. So we can conclude that. The higher the retardation factor, the faster it's moving from the baseline. So it means that the higher retardation factor is less polar than low retardation factor. It's because when it's higher retardation factor, it's less polar, then it's less detached. It's less polar, then it means that it's not attachable, not strongly enough to. To apa? Lekat, lekat. Ah. Okay, less polar, less polar, then it's move higher because it doesn't stick to the silica gel. Yes. Okay. So that's all for me. Next, I will pass to the next presenter. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I'm Mama Arif Daniel, and I will. I will uh, explain about the safety and precaution during the experiment. Uh, has, have we have been told that before we enter the lab, we need to wear the lab coat and also uh, the clothes shoes. And because when we do the experiment, uh, they, we expose to other chemical thing like acid or base that we, it can harm our, our skin. And also we need to wear the wear the glove uh, to avoid our skin, our hands to the chemical thing. And also, um, for the TLC plate, uh, we cannot touch it with, with our bare hands. So that's why we need to wear, wear glove. And next, for the, um, when we need to drop the solvent on the TLC plate, we need to drop only a little drop because we we don't want to we don't want to um, make the make the spot bigger, so that will affect the, our result because it's because it will 
affect our affect our our calculation. And next, for this, when we put it in the developer chamber, uh, we need to put it slowly because uh, when we put it slowly, we will um, uh, the solvent inside we did not splash on the test And the lastly, on the last experiment, uh, we need to use the UV light test on the TLC plate. Uh, we have we need to use the transparent glass because glass cannot uh, reflect the uh, UV light. All right, that's all for me. Thank you. <clears throat> so we're going on to principle of thin layer chromatography. So the, base uh, the basic principle of thin layer chromatography is to identify substance or compound from the mixture. So uh, we will identify the substance uh, from the mixture using uh, stationary, uh, stationary phase, so, uh, the gel plate itself, and supporting by uh, the mobile phase, the organic solvent. So, <coughs> so let's go on to the application in industry. So there are four applications pharmaceutical modern medicine, pharmaceutical traditional medicine, agriculture, and food industry. So, for, uh, so let's start with agriculture. In agriculture, we are, using, uh, we are using TLC to study the biological study of the plant itself. So with TLC, we could use to identify the uh, antibiotic and also a antibiotic, antibacterial and antifungal properties. And TLC also, uh, will help us to understand the the, the presence of antioxidant in that plant. So, how TLC will show us the presence of antioxidant by spraying TPPH and also ethanol onto the gel plate, onto the gel plate. So, if that gel plate turn into yellow color, that show us that the the oxidation that the antioxidant is present from that plant. So, moving on to the pharmaceutical traditional medicine. Uh, in, from, in, uh, in this application, uh, we will, we will, uh, we, we need to know, we going, TLC will tell us the chemical compound in that traditional medicine. So with TLC, we could, uh, we could know the uh, active compound, the chemical composition, and also we will learn the metabolic rates of the plants in their desired condition. So the third pharmaceutical in modern medicine. <clears throat> so uh, the main purpose of the LC in pharmaceutical modern medicine is uh, of course for the production of medicine itself and also for the uh, quality assurance. So we are going to conduct two different tests, which is one qualitative test uh, to identify the presence and the absence of the substance in the product. And we also conduct quantitative tests to, uh, to, det uh, to detect the, purif the purify of the, of the substance. So, <clears throat> the qualitative test, uh, we normally conduct TLC, but in order to achieve uh, better results, we normally conduct HPLC, which is High Performance Liquid Chromatography. And we also conduct, uh, and for quantitative test, we conduct TLC, even though it is not the most effective method we have. But it will, it, uh, in order to reduce the cost and also to have the results faster. Uh, so last but not least, for the food industry. Uh, uh, food industry use TLC, uh, use TLC in their quality control and also food composition analysis. Where, uh, example, the can company could use TLC to... <coughs> to detect the presence of contaminants in their product, such as pesticide or heavy metal. And also, this company can use TLC to develop new product, such as they can use TLC to do screening uh, for, new, uh, for desirable new flavor and also for new aromatic compounds. So that's all from us. Thank you. Hi and sa assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Muhammad Ida Seminar Susin, and I'm from Group Six. And 
my group will present about TLC, which is thin layer chromatography. So what is chromatography itself? It's, it is a separation of mixture into components, which is also known as separation process. So there are two types of phases in chromatography, which is uh, stationary phase and mobile phase. In those, using those two phases, we, we will create another two types of chromatography, which is liquid-liquid um, chromatography and liquid-solid chromatography. Um, between those two phases, uh, it will migrate depending on its affinity of each phases. So what is the main purpose that we use TLC for? The main purpose is that uh, to determine the purity of the components and to find out what components are we using to identify the components. Uh, um, the problem statement that we found in this experiment is how do we found out the purity of the components through, uh, by using the thin layer chromatography itself. So that is all from me. I will pass the mic to Hisham. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Muhammad Hishamuddin. And I will present about the procedure for this experiment, which is TLC. So first thing is we prepare three samples, which is acid, basic, and also neutral. Um, and also we will uh, dissolve these three samples with um, DCM, which is dichloromethane. And after that, we prepare two developing solvent, which is uh, DCM, DCM hexane and also hexane ethanol. And after that, after we prepare the developing solvent, we transfer the developing solvent into the developing chamber. Um, of course, we use a uh, pipette to, become, uh, to, to make it more accurate. And after that, we prepare two pl uh, TLC plate, which is um, we will uh, draw a line. Um, first is the baseline. Baseline and also the front solvent. So each of this uh, each of this plate we will uh, label with DCM hexane and also hexane ethanol. And after that, after we um, and also we make a spot for each. Uh, we make three spots, which is acid, uh, base, and also neutral for the two, uh, the two uh, plate. And after that, we will spot the the spot that we make, which is a. B and N with the capillary tube, and at this part we need to be uh, we need to be careful because the capillary tube is very fragile. So make sure you spot it, you take from the developing uh, from the sample, and then you tick. Okay. So and after that we put the plate into the developing chamber, and we uh, it it, um, it will we need to put it diagonally because it's more easier to take out the plate. And also, we need to make sure that it does not um, above the front, the, the solvent front. And after that, we take out the plate, we dry the plate, and after that, we expose to the short wave UV light sources. <coughs> so this is what the result where that we get. So this one is the DCM hexane. So I will give one example how to calculate um, uh, the retention factor, RF. So first thing first, we need to calculate the distance between the baseline and also um, the front solvent because we need to divide with the distance between um, the, for, we take example of base. So base from the uh, baseline to the distance where the base moves from the plate. So the, the actually, um, the dimension is um, we can we can use any dimension because retention factor is dimensionless, so it's okay to use cm meter or millimeter. So I will present to the next presenter, which is Brother Iqbal. So hi everyone. So we moving to the next part, which is health, safety, and precaution. So um, it's quite common thing when we do uh, experiment, we must uh, wear hand gloves. Uh, uh, lab coat and shoes and just wear uh, uh, safety glasses 
because when we doing this experiment, we are using um, short wave UV light, which is have a UV and can cause damage to your eyes. And then uh, when we handling the TLC plate, the TLC plate here is uh, the white thing have a silica gel. So um, you cannot touch uh, at the front, you cannot touch the silica gel because if your skin have uh, oil, it can affect the it can affect the silica at the TLC plate and affect your result. And then um, when we measure the TLC plate here, we make a baseline. And then uh, this is this should be one cm here. Uh, when we put the TLC plate uh, into the de developing chamber, make sure the solvent is not um, above the baseline here. And then um, when we when we make a spot uh, in uh, the acid base and neutral here, make sure you uh, do not forget to spot because we cannot see the the spot and do do not uh, put uh, too much uh, spot uh, because it can affect your result. And then. Um, yeah, when we put the TLC plate into the developing chamber, make sure you close the developing chamber because um, the solvent can can uh, can be uh, evaporate very quickly. So um, the most crucial part here is when we handling the TLC plate, we are using the UV light short wave, and then do not uh, do not uh, when you handling this do not. Uh, do not need too much uh, or excessive exposure can uh, make can lead a cancer skin uh, skin cancer or it can damage your eye. So we moving to the next part. Assalamualaikum. My name is Mama Aziz. Uh, for your information, uh, TLC is widely used in uh, various fields such as food, uh, pharmaceutical, clinical analysis, and such, because it is easy and uh, it is quick. Uh, let's go to the principle. Okay, first, purification test. How uh, TLC is able to do purification test is by having uh, a sample and then and, uh, a real authentic uh, product of what the sample is you are trying to recreate it. Recreate. Uh, and then uh, when we do the experiment, and then we can compare the result whether by, uh, by, by the color or the, the spot that is making and the shape. Uh, this is just an example. This not like this. Uh, this is very important because uh, in pharmaceutical, we want to have the highest purification, highest purity, because uh, in order to reduce the the um, side effect and the improve the efficiency of the medi medication. Next, we have separation. Uh, this type of separation is not the same as centrifugation, uh, because what we are trying to do is uh, we are trying to get a small sample because it is small, uh, we cannot have huge sample. Uh, it is very important uh, for, for trying to uh, understand the property of the sample that, uh, for example, like fatty acid in oil. Uh, we are able to separate fatty acid from oil uh, from a uh, different type of oil as well, such as uh, vegetable oil, animal fat, and then uh, uh, after we we done with the separation, we can uh, we can have the uh, product uh, and and uh, we can have uh, uh, the product to formulate. Uh, formulate the like as like 
uh, cosmetic and food. Uh, uh, that's all for me. Okay, thank you. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good afternoon everyone. Uh, we are from group 7. My name is Muhammad Sharifuddin bin Muhammad Amin and this is the rest of the other members of group 7. We have brother Sameh and we have our leaders, brother Azam and we have brother Nabil. Okay. And today's presentation, we will be presenting about recrystallization. And in our presentation today, we will be talking about four parts, which is the first one is the introduction, the second one is the procedure, and the third one is the result and the safety precaution, and the fourth one is the application industry. So we will talk about the introduction and the problem statement. So what is recrystallization? So recrystallization is basically a method or a process that widely being used to purify a solid compound. It's a process where atom in arranging their structure into a crystal rigid structure. And as we know from the experiment that we did in the lab, uh, impure substance in, is being purified into by crystallization by dissolving the pure substance in the solvent at an elevated temperature because each substance have their own like suitable solvent for each substance. So in order to achieve a great, great result for the crystallization, you have to use a suitable solvent for specific substance. And so, like I said before, uh, by dissolving the pure, pure, impure substance into the solvent, and the next step is let the solution to cool down slowly. And as the solution cool down, the solubility of the solution will decrease and it will cause to the solution to crystallize. And next, I will talk about the problem statement. When we talking about recrystallization, it can be quite challenging in terms of industry or lab to achieve a great result in terms of to achieve the high level of purity of the recrystallization. This is because of several factors like the ratio of the substance and the water. It can be because of the suitable solvent that we, that we use. It can also be because of the control temperature. So all these factors can cause the, can make an impact on the result of recrystallization. So next I'll pass to Brother Sameh for the procedure of recrystallization. Hi everyone, so I'm gonna talk about procedure. So in order for us to do the experiment, we need to get ourselves two flasks and then fill it with acid dry precipitate. And then after that, we need to fill it with distilled water. Uh, and then we need to heat it up. We need to heat the sample until it boils like this. And then after we're done with the boiling, uh, we, need, we, we need to took we need to take uh, one of the flasks and then put it in the ice bath. And then the other one, we need to let it rest in a room temperature. Uh, but uh, when we transferring the flask, we need to make sure that uh, we don't shake the solvent too much because uh, it can affect the result that we want. So I'll pass the result to Brother Azam. Uh, thank you. Now I'm going to talk about the result. Each group will have two flasks, one which is placed on the table in room temperature and the other is placed on the ice. As you can see from this sample from my group, the crystallization cannot be clearly, cannot be clearly seen as, uh, this as there is an excessive amount of solid that is put into the flask at the beginning of the experiment. This is a sample from the other group. As you can see, the crystallization are more clear on this sample. Next, I'm going to talk about the precaution and safety. In order, in order to make the experiment a success, first we need to label the flask clearly in order to not confuse 
the flask on the table and the flask on the ice. Next, do not add too many solvent into the flask as it can, uh, it can cause the crystallization to not occur. And lastly, during the crystallization process, do not move the flask too much as it can temper with the results. Next, uh, always wear lab coats and gloves uh, while dealing with chemicals as some chemicals could be dangerous and toxic to human and beware of the heat pad during heating process as it can be really hot. Uh, next, I'm going to pass to Brother Nabil. Okay, hello, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum. My name is uh, Muhammad Nabil. Next, I will be present about uh, application in industry for recrystallization. For example, the first, the first example is pharmaceutical. Uh, the, the recrystallization uh, method is a popular method for pharmaceutical manufacture, which, which is, is to remove uh, purity uh, formation. Uh, it enters uh, the dissolving beginning in medication uh, in a suitable solvent and then allowing the allowing the solution to cool or uh, evaporate gradually causing the desired causing the desired uh, chemicals to crystallize uh, and then uh, while the substance in a solution is stay or it is split out the next example is uh, chemical industry uh, recrystallization is a common method used in chemical industry which also same uh, uh, which, is, which is it removes the chemicals good uh, to purify them. Uh, this um, this chemical it, uh, this may be this may be contaminated by impurities, uh, by product or unrated uh, unrated starting component under chemical reaction. Uh, these impurities can be separated uh, from chemical target by uh, recrystallize, producing a product with a greater level purity. Next, uh, for food industry, for example, we can use uh, how we can produce sugar. Uh, sugar, in order to get sugar, uh, it is came from sugar cane or sugar beets. Uh, it is heated in a boil, cool, uh, and it it crystallizes to produce sugar crystal. Uh, as also same as the salt the salt crystal, which is uh, similar to the sugar crystal, but in uh, but it is using by evaporating salt water. So I think that's all from me. Thank you. So, uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim and Assalamualaikum to everyone. So, inshallah, today we are from Group 8, going to present on topic about recrystallization. So, for the first part, we're going to uh, continue with our introduction first. Okay, my name is Muhammad Daniel Firdaus. Uh, okay, for the introduction, the process of recrystallization is the process of verifying uh, chemical substance which is usually uh, solid compounds, uh, we must uh, dissolve it in the uh, proper solvent. Uh, why? Because uh, in this experiment, for HCL, we use uh, distilled water. But uh, we have the compound that didn't, didn't dissolve in uh, distilled water. So we need you to use the proper solvent. So the basic concept is uh, uh, we need to dissolve in pro uh, proper solvent in high temperature which which mean we must heat it up and then it will solidify uh, in low temperature which means we cool it down and then it will uh, solidify will create the uh, crystal naturally uh, okay this crystal uh, is the pure compound is more pure than the before uh, but it doesn't 100% pure, which is we must do 
a lot of lot of time to increase the purity. Uh, in this solvent, uh, we have distilled water, right? But uh, it also leaves the impurities in the solvent. Uh, Okay, for the uh, cooling process, uh, actually we must uh, cooling it slowly uh, when we want to get the long, uh, long shape of crystal. Otherwise, it will get the shorter shape, and then it will. Uh, we in shorter shape, we we must handle it more carefully. Okay, that's all for me. I pass to my friend. Okay, so uh, Assalamualaikum, uh, my name is uh, Kusheri So I will explain the problem statement uh, for the experiment uh, For this experiment, we need to determine how to how to uh, purify the impure solid by using the recrystallization Okay, so that's all from me, I will pass to the next presenter Okay, uh, so for the next part, we're going to take a look at the most vital part of the experiment, which is the process or the procedure. Okay, uh, as we can see here, we have uh, a very little process or procedure, so we're going to uh, go through it slowly and clearly, okay? Okay, so for the first part, uh, where we need to wait uh, our impure product, which is in this case, we are using hydrochloric acid. So, uh, we need to add the hydrochloric acid powder into two different conical flasks. And uh, one thing that we need to pay attention here is that we need to make sure that our conical flasks are clean and also dry. Okay, after that, we need to put uh, our distilled water to both of the conical flasks. Alright, uh, finish uh, on the first process. We can move up to the second one, which is we need to heating up our solution. Okay. So for this process, we need to have uh, the hot plate uh, and we need to take both of our conical flasks and place it on top of uh, our hot plate. And then we need to heat uh, our mixture for around 7 to 9 minutes. So, uh, and at this process, one thing that we need to make sure or we need to pay attention that we need to pay attention uh, for our impurities to be fully dissolved because if uh, the impurities are not dissolved fully it will cause trouble in the cool down process okay so after finishing our heating up process we can move to the third one which is cooling down so uh, in this procedure or process we want uh, our we want our mixture to be cooled down uh, in two different conditions. The first one is uh, at the room temperature and the second one uh, at a very, very low temperature. So what we are doing here is that we put our first flask at the table so that uh, it can be cooled down on the room te uh, at the room temperature and for our second flask, we uh, immerse it uh, into an ice bath top. Okay. So we can leave it uh, for like seven or nine minutes and after that we can take it out and do the observation on our flask. So uh, actually if we can see inside of the flask we can see uh, the solution which is uh, the impurities in a liquid solution and we can also see the crystal which is our pure product. Okay, so for the next part we're going to discuss about our result. Okay, uh, so if we can see here, we only have two variables, which is ice bath and also room temperature. Uh, and from our observation, uh, we can see that our crystal at the room temperature is more larger and more well-defined. Uh, it means like it's more clearer than one on the ice bath. So what is the reason behind this? Uh, it is because the rate of crystallization. So at, uh, at the room temperature, we cool the mixture down very slowly, which means that the rate of crystallization is much more slower than on the ice bath. 
So that means that uh, more molecules uh, can <coughs> rearrange properly uh, in this compound. So that it will uh, result in a better result uh, than the ice bath. So continue to the next part. Assalamualaikum. My name is Cik Kung Muhammad Aikal and I'll be representing about the some of the application recrystallization in some industry. So for the first, widely used uh, is pharmaceutical industry. So how it works actually. So this industry, pharmaceutical industry, uh, use, use the application of recrystallization in for for the um, purification of drug compound. So how it works? It by dissolving the crude drug compound into uh, into suitable solvent and allowing it to cool or evaporate under control condition. And then. Uh, the, the impurities will be left out and while the desired the drug compound will eventually the eventually will be crystallized so for the next industry food industry the application of recrystallization in this industry is used for the sugar refining so for the sugar refining uh, it just simply by dissolving the raw sugar into the water and then and then it will evaporate and cool it down uh, and, and then it will turn to the crystallized, crystallized sugar. So I'll, I'll pass the next part for the next presenter. Uh, okay, so for the third one is uh, petrochemical. So petrochemical, uh, one of the example is recrystallization uh, of uh, paraffin wax. Uh, it can uh, be need by crude oil. Uh, uh, paraffin wax can be recrystallized by using the suitable solvent and uh, cool it with a suitable uh, temperature. Uh, so, uh, uh, this uh, this recrystallization is essential uh, for such as uh, uh, candle making, packaging, and. Uh, uh, and etc. <laughs> Etc. Okay, so I will pass uh, to the next presenter. Okay, so uh, my name is Daniel. I will present about safety and precaution during lab. Uh, so uh, safety and precaution. Uh, separate to three parts. First, uh, uh, safety before entering lab. Uh, second, uh, during the lab, during the experiment. And third, uh, after the experiment. So, uh, for, for the safety and precaution before the experiment, uh, basically we must, we, we must uh, wear a proper clothes, like this lady over here. Uh, full clothes. Full clothes. Uh, uh, and then we need to wear, uh, obviously, lab coat in order to avoid uh, maybe splash, maybe chemical region splash to our, to our body. Uh, and also, we need to wear. A glove like this handsome dude, uh, uh, and lastly we need to wear shoes 
do not wear sandal. Sandal is comfortable, but it is not cover all your feet. Uh, for the next part, uh, the safety and precaution during the experiment, uh, uh, we need to for our experiment we need to label the flask clearly so that we can do the experiment smoothly. The experiment will run smoothly. Uh, next, we need to use uh, if you want to take uh, if you want to take a substance from uh, from the bika, use only the spatula given. Do not use the the spatula that you use to take the neutral. You use the same spatula to take another substance like acid and base. If the spatula is used for neutral, just use for neutral. Uh, and then the last part is after the experiment. Uh, so after the experiment, we need to wash our hand with detergent. Uh, and then we, and then uh, all the all the equipment. No. Uh, and then all the chemical that we use, we need to throw in the waste beaker. Do not, do not throw in the sink. Into the sink. Uh, after that, we need to wash our, our equipment, all our equipment using the tap water. And lastly, we need to place all our equipment, supplies and chemical region into the original location. So, uh, final, uh, so lastly, if a corrosive chemical uh, gets on our skin or clothes, uh, um, uh, we need to immediately wash the affected area using large amount of water. And if our clothes catch on fire, use the safety blanket. And after that, notify the uh, notify the instructor about the accident. So I think that's all from our group. Thank you.